right now with our top story. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruling unanimously yesterday against President Trump and his executive order restricting immigration to the United States. Donald Trump spoke to reporters after the decision, indicating he will continue to fight for this ban. Watch. It's a political decision that we're going to see them in court. This is just a decision that came down, but we're going to win the case. So we'll win, uh, in my opinion, very easily. The president also tweeted about the ruling, saying this, in all caps, see you in court. The security of our nation is at stake. Joining us right now is defense attorney and author of Electile Dysfunction, a guide for unaroused voters. Alan Dershowitz is with us. Alan, good to have you on the program this morning. Thank you. First of all, I have to tell Mike, even if he thinks he's guilty, by the time I'm finished, he'll believe he's innocent. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm going to call you, Alan. That's why. Oh, you are this. Why, are this. why don't we all have your phone number? Yes. Alan, please. So, Alan, what do you think the White House uh, should do now that the Ninth Circuit well, ruled against have... the reinstatement of the ban? Where does this go from here? They have a real conundrum. They probably would win in the Supreme Court on the merits. This was a very, very weak kind of Ninth Circuit decision uh, on standing and on the Establishment Clause. I think they have a very, very good argument, particularly as it relates to people who have never been in the country, the family in Yemen, who applies for a visa, no connections with the United States, no standing, no due process rights. So they might win, but it will take them months because they're not going to get the stay reversed. So when President Trump says this poses a great danger to the security of the country, it seems to me he has only one option. He has to write a new order. He has to write one that is constitutional. He has to sit down with really good constitutional lawyers, with Congress, with members of the national security team. He doesn't even have to withdraw the old order. Let that go slowly, gradually to the Supreme Court. But in the meantime, have a new order that will be challenged, but that will be better focused on getting sustained. And I think he might prevail that way if he did it. Professor, don't you think, though, that this was a fundamental case where the president had the constitutional and statutory authority to make the decision, and the court was essentially arguing on a policy perspective, which is not the purview of that court? Would that be fair to no, say? I, I think it is fair to say. They asked for evidence that these seven countries had produced terrorism. Well, the president doesn't need to produce evidence. He has the authority as the president to look to classified material, to speak to his advisors. And remember, these seven countries were picked by the Obama administration. Look, this administration ran on a platform of going after Islamic extreme terrorism, a phrase that the Obama administration refused to use. And they're entitled to say the Islamic terrorism comes from countries that happen to be Muslim countries. Would it have saved the constitutionality if they had added Armenia? So now we have seven Muslim countries and one Christian country. That makes no sense. And the idea that it's not okay to prefer persecuted religions, that's ridiculous. In 1944, Congress passed the War Refugee Act, which was focused on saving Jews from Nazism. So protecting Christians and Baha'is and Kurds from Islamic extremism is a perfectly reasonable thing to do and doesn't violate the Establishment Clause. So I think they get the better of the substantive argument, but they're not going to win a stay. So they have this dilemma that they have to confront. Alan, it's Dagan McDowell. The Wall Street Journal editorial page today writes about this uh, order from the Trump White House has now become an opening for judges to restrict the power of the political branches to conduct foreign policy. And their concern is judicial overreach at this point. Is that a worry? I think it is a worry when you give everybody standing, when you say the state of Washington can come in on behalf of people who have never been in the United States because maybe they'll get invited to give a lecture at the University of Washington. That really does constrain the president. Look, the president has to be constrained. We have a system of checks and balances. We're the only country in the world where the judiciary is equal to the presidency. We also have a very other interesting check and balance. Here we have a state, a state checking the federal government. So we have to make sure our system of checks and balances doesn't go out of whack mm -hmm. and one branch of government doesn't become more powerful than the other. And I think this case does show checks and balances at work, but I think the opinion goes too far on standing, goes too far on the Establishment Clause, and that's why the president can deal with this effectively if he introduces a new executive order 
which confronts these issues and narrows it. It shouldn't apply, for example, to green card holders. Right. And the court was right in saying that you can't apply it to green card holders. Let the president write it in a narrow way. That way he protects America's security and he protects the Constitution. Win-win for everybody. Professor, tell me who checks the courts, because it looks like that they have the attitude that they can just tell the executive branch or the legislative branch where to go. I'm wondering who's supposed to check the judicial branch when they overreach and they act as if the, the judicial branch is a supreme branch of government. Well, the check is that President Trump gets to appoint a nominee to the Supreme <laughs> Court and the Congress, which is Republican, gets to confirm that and that changes the nature of who's on the judiciary. The judiciary changes all the time. It's now in California, for example, in the Ninth Circuit, more Democrats than Republicans. But three or four years from now, there'll be more Republicans than Democrats. It's a messy system. Nobody ever said it would be pretty or it would be efficient. And sometimes the courts do take too much power, often mm. for the good, like when they desegregated the schools, sometimes in dangerous ways, in my view, when they uh, uh, had Citizens United. But yeah. different people can disagree about specific opinions, but we have a nice process at work, but it's inefficient and it's not pretty. Uh, Taya. Yeah, Alan, this is Taya. I have a couple questions for you, but one is, I think we agree that it's the government's job to protect its people. That's its first job. And then sure. if that's the case, then would you argue that President Trump doesn't just have the right to put this travel ban in place, but maybe he has an obligation if his information is that the terrorists are coming through without this ban. And, and from my friends who are serving in the Middle East, it sounds like that really is a real threat with those seven countries. So do you think that it's not just a right but an obligation or not? I think it's an obligation, and he'll show us that he takes the obligation seriously if he issues a new executive order now. Now remember, one of the important things not mentioned in the opinion was a bunch of former secretaries of state and heads of national security wrote a letter essentially to the court saying, no, 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 you don't have to worry, it's not such a threat. So the court had two things. The president on the one hand, who has the legitimate constitutional authority to protect us, but a bunch of other former people from the government saying, don't worry so much. And I think it took that into account. Its biggest mistake mm is it uh, took into account the president's campaign rhetoric. We're going to yeah, have a Muslim exactly. ban. Let's yeah. have a discussion with Rudy and Giuliani. That had nothing Let's to see do if we can it. make this. Right. Uh, you know, we, we, I, think it, I think it was over, overdone. And